some people come to see me and they say, oh, no, uh, it, it's fate, it's like that, I can't change, uh, I can't change anything, uh, my life is to be unhappy forever, you know, and people think, really think that, and I think that life is... Welcome to Finding Your Spark again. I am so happy to be here with my guest, Julie, who is here all the way from the north of France. And she is a medium who works with the tools of the spiritualist world to help you learn to know yourself better so you can move into a more deliberate relationship with your life and your future. Welcome, Julie. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Mm, yes, indeed. I am so glad that we connected uh, and that we're going to have this conversation that really is about happiness and how we bring it and why we choose it. So tell me a little bit about uh, what you do and uh, how that how that impacts people. I try, I try every day uh, to help people, uh, as you said, to be more connected with themselves. Uh, I work in the north of France. Um, my dream is to, to live in England one day, maybe in the future. Um, I can work um, from face to face, you know, and presently and can talk to people and manipulate uh, such tools uh, such as the cards, for example, but not only. Uh, and I can work, uh, I can also work uh, with uh, clients that don't live in France, you know, and the point, uh, how it impacts my life and the life of people is that when they come to see me, they have problems, you know, they don't, they don't, uh, uh, come to see me and say, oh, everything is okay in my life. I don't have any problem. Everything is fine. Unfortunately, if you come to see me, it's uh, that there is a black point somewhere in your life. And um, it's when people ask questions, you know, they, are, they often are at a turning point in their lives and uh, they ask themselves some questions. Uh, did I make the right choices? Um, I want to. I want to change my job. I don't like my job anymore. Or in my personal life, there is a problem, or there are many problems. So they come to see me, and we make a point. We make a general point. Where are you? What do you want for your future? And my job is to give you some advice and some tools to build and to uh, reconstruct sometimes your your future way of life and to understand what are the drawbacks what are your forces to what are your advantages uh, because people often think that if they have problems it's their fault you know much culpability guilt you know in their lives and my job is also to highlight your uh your forces and your assets you know to to say no you have abilities you are able to do such things and such things and at the end of the consultation um the the, the person uh should be better well i am so glad that you uh gave us a complete sort of overview. You know, I one of the reasons that I was so excited to uh, to interview you is because I have a lot of family in France. So this way that you're talking about being able to connect through, I assume, through Zoom or some other platform with people who are outside of your region is uh, is really great to to know that that's available to anyone who's listening to the sound of our voices. Yeah. So uh, and the other thing that I I love the way you speak about this power. So a lot of times in in America, people talk about um, you are in charge of your own destiny and right and people do what you just said they turn it into guilt and uh they say oh well i'm i made this and now i don't know how to unmake it and so 
I just must be a bad person or I'm bad at life, right? And they sort of beat themselves up with it. So this sense of what is it that we have that is internal, that is our power, that, and how does that relate to that sensation of I've made choices that lead me someplace that I am pleased about, happiness? Of course, and it's, it's all yeah. about, you know, um, the duality between uh, free will and fate. Some people come to see me and they say, oh, no, uh, it, it's fate. It's like that. I can't change. Uh, I can't change anything. Uh, uh, my life is to be unhappy forever, you know, and people think, really think that. And I think that life is a mix between those two um, notions because we have free will we are the most important persons of our lives you know and um, society uh, learns that we have to take care of each other of course it's a, a great thing to take care of each other because it's my job too but you can't help people if you don't take care of yourself first you know and thanks to uh, numerology uh, i didn't talk about that uh, thanks to the date of birth of people you can calculate uh, their um, their numerology and uh, you you have often the same things that are coming out you know i want to help people i don't think about myself i spend time i don't rest um, i don't uh, have time for myself, you know, and people get lost one day, they get lost. And that's when they come to see me because they think that everything is fate, everything is calculated and they can't change uh, anything in their lives. And my job is to mm -hmm. say, yes, you can. Some things, there are some things um, efficiently that you can change and here are the tools to do it. So it's great that you brought in this element of birth date because I think that this really does point up that difference between uh, looking at what we've been given, right? And for many people, numerology is a really good indicator of what we've been given or uh, astrology, right? There are a lot of ways to kind of look at the world, to turn the kaleidoscope and look at the world and say, oh, look, it looks different. If we, if we gather these ideas together and we look at it through that lens, um, but to say, yes, you have, there's information in your birth date, but that that information is not a prescription for every day of your life, right? It's just information. It's how you came in. And so what you do with that is, can be so vastly different from each other. And right? how you understand that because people, uh, most people don't know numerology or astrology that they know just a few a few notions by watching TV or listening to radio, you know. But when you explain them uh, all the impacts of their way of lives, you know, some sometimes and I I can say it very often, they look at me and they say, "Oh, that's why I react like that," you know. They make some connections between their past and their way of reacting to uh, their everyday lives, problems, you know, and they say, oh, I understand now. And they have a, some kind of bubble, you know, in their heads and they understand, they have the the, the declic, we say in French, the declic, you know, uh, of understanding that. And it's really important. You would say like, that in English as well. You would say something like it clicked into place. Yeah. Yes, it's a declic yeah. because yeah they know now they know so they can work yeah. on it even if it yeah. uh, takes a few months or a few years it doesn't matter how long it takes the the most important for me is to give them the declic you know and now they know mm. so they can they can move forward and they can understand and when they are confronted to new problems later they think about our consultation and they say oh yes Julie told me that, and, and, and I can work now. That really is a level of awareness that we're practicing, isn't it? It really, uh, when we become aware of the issues, the true issues, 
the right diagnosis that is actual instead of the you, you, you're the reason I have problems, right? <laughs> um, to, and then and then become aware of our own power, right? That's such a beautiful thing that you're bringing into you the feel world. You much more confident in yourself because you have the mm. tools, you know, to understand and to work on it. And you are not in some kind of victimization anymore. You know, you are an actor of your life. You are the first role, you know, of your life. And you, you don't wait for someone to come and save you. Uh, it doesn't exist that when you, when you understand fully your path, your way of life, it's, it's, uh, it's really a, some kind of a revelation. Yes. And a level of awareness that is very, very high, of course. This shift in identity, the way that you're talking about it in terms of theatrical terms, of course, I love it because I have a strong theatrical background. And, um, uh, you know, this I am the leading lady or I am the leading man, right? I am the main character in my life is frankly not something that is encouraged in our societies. It is really discouraged, right? You should care for your children. You should care for your spouse. You should care for your, your boss's business, everyone. right? Yes. There are a lot of things that you should put above yourself, right? And when this really shifts and you get that sort of, um, uh, uh, bullseye view of yourself as the one who the camera is on for you, is really can change a lot, can't it? And sometimes it's, unfortunately, we are waiting for uh, strong uh, problems in our lives, such as diseases or sickness or burnout, you know? And I say, oh, when was the last time I've thought about myself, you know? Uh, what was the last time uh, I had some pleasure I had, I, I relaxed, I've just relaxed, uh, have a bath, you know, read a book, um, simple things of everyday life that we don't, we don't take the time anymore to do that because we are stimulated by external factors, as you said, children, job, uh, pastime of the children, the husband, the wife, uh, you know, supermarkets <laughs> cooking kitchen yeah. <laughs> and when you go to when you go to bed you say uh, uh, how much time did i uh, spare for myself you know 20 minutes half an hour it's it's mm. very difficult now because society learns us to be dependent on someone you know you have mm. to be dependent or someone depends on you on you so we are we are lost at a moment of our, of our lives we get lost and that's when we feel that that people come to see me because they they feel lost and they don't know themselves you know entirely so let's t i love that we're sort of honing in on this power that creates happiness and um let's let's dig in a little bit into how can we raise that awareness and and put ourselves in that driver's seat or that main character role uh if, for people who are just at home right now uh wanting to to feel more in control of their lives i think that you have to 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 take simple actions you know of everyday life um I am convinced that it must be set up uh, from the childhood, you know, when you have some children, if some parents are listening to us right now, uh, the children must be learned to be uh, dependent and to take care of themselves, you know. It can be through meditation, for example, it can be done through relaxation, gardening, sport, you know, you have we have such advantages now. You, you talked about it uh, earlier. We can connect with everyone, uh, you know, even uh, if we are far away from each other. 
that um, the, 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 the source of this uh, connection and this uh, happiness for me, it begins with childhood, you know, because mm -hmm. when you are an adult, it's much more difficult to learn how to take care of yourself because if you are 40, for example, 40, 50 years old, um, people didn't uh, teach you to take care of yourself. So you have a, a, a long background behind you and you have to, uh, to learn now. Uh, Middle-aged people have to learn now. Whereas if you learn that during childhood, it can be more uh, comfortable and could be easier when you are an adult say ah oh, yes i did that when when i was a, a kid or when i was a teenage uh, a teenage boy or a teenage girl and it takes maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes a day you know you don't have to uh, uh, take a day off a month and say i will take care of myself no it's uh, for example, by setting up challenges, you know, because trust, trust is a big, big issue here in France. People don't trust, they lack confidence in themselves. So if you make, if you set up challenges regularly, you know, oh, I can't, I can't cook. For example, I can't cook. I'm a very bad cook. Uh, that's, uh, I can't cook. <laughs> Sometimes. I said, oh, I take a, a recipe in a book and I challenge myself and I do that. You know, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's just a simple action. But when you have finished your recipe, whether it's good or not, it's not a problem. The result is not a problem. You said, I did that. I managed to do that and to take care time to take care of myself and to challenge myself to uh, bring pleasure to my family and bring pleasure for myself, you know? So mm -hmm. it's simple actions, you know, connection with nature, connection with animals, um, sports, taking uh, um, care of our bodies also, because there are many problems with bodies in Occident, um, with the, the images that we reflect in the mirror, you know? So it's a, mm -hmm. a, an accumulation of actions uh, that that you can set up from childhood and with which you live all your life and that you you reactive regularly and that's for for me according to me that's the way to to cultivate happiness you know you are happy when you when you get much more confident in yourself you take pleasure also so that's all benefits for us that's great. Thank you. Uh, we um, we talked about here about, you know, spending time in nature and with animals and in meditation. And I noticed that there is a, a, a tie together for many people in the silent activity. And joy really comes in the silence, right? We think that it's when we hear a joke and we laugh, right? Or we think that it's when we're playing with our friends and we the, the energy gets all crazy and fun and, you know, we're playful and that, that that is joy. And of course, those are enjoyable moments, absolutely. But the joy that does not leave us, the joy that is not dependent on anyone else, that really comes in the silence. It comes from inside, mm -hmm, of course. And I, I, I don't know if you do that, but uh, when you experience some emotions, um, often you close your eyes when you are afraid, when you are happy. You close your eyes because you feel connected fully, entirely to your emotions. And that's pure emotion. When you laugh, when you spend time with your friends, as you said, it can be a, a joyful moment. But sometimes people laugh. Um, it's, you can see that on photographs, by the way. Uh, they are superficial uh, smiles, you know. Hmm. But I'm not happy inside of me. And mm -hmm. meditation mm -hmm. moments, relaxation moments can, um, uh, can make us feel what's inside us. 
And it is mm. very uh, uncomfortable to feel that because we are not used to feel that. So, uh, oh no, no, I don't, I don't want to know what's inside me because I'm afraid. You know, people say mm. that to me. Oh no, no, um, I don't like, I hate meditation because uh, uh, I, I feel this, some weird things. And I think about what am I going to eat tonight? And did I close the door when I, uh, you know? So uh, it's it's very uncomfortable to do that. But when you do that every day, a few minutes per day, you are used to that and you feel fully connected to your emotions so you can understand them, understand why you feel them. And so uh, you... You, you are able to heal them uh, mm. easier than uh, if you if you say, oh, no, I don't feel that. We'll see that later. No, because it's like a boomerang, you know, but it, it comes right to our head and, oh, I didn't cry uh, last year, uh, two years ago. Uh, what was the uh, when was the last time I've cried? You know, so it the emotions now in our in our society they are embarrassing you know and you you teach children oh no don't laugh oh no don't don't shout don't cry you know but why we are human so we can experience our emotions fully and happiness is an emotion you know so you have mm. to feel connected mm. with that and show people that you are really happy not just smile to say oh i'm smiling she's going to see i'm happy no it's real happiness real joy you make an excellent point that uh, in order to feel happy, right? You could have all the circumstances of happy, but in order to actually feel happy, you have to be aware enough to know what it feels like and be able to express it within yourself. Of yeah. Course. It's so yeah. logical for me. It makes yes. sense. Yes. Yes. And um, I love that you bring up childhood, right? Because I think for a lot of people, there are traumas that have happened in their background mm -hmm. and they have been carrying these things around with them, right? And they have been shaping their world around uh, circumstances that may maybe serve to them to hide their emotions when they were children, right? But, uh, or to be unaware of certain emotions entirely, to just let that go dead in them. Uh, but that, that no longer serve them, right? So that ability to tap into the fullness of yourself is, can come in so many packages. And, uh, and that, you know, talk, talking about using divination cards, tarot cards, uh, uh, pendulums, like all different ways that we can find in the door, right? So that door can be really slammed shut for us. And to find these different fun, playful ways that are not threatening to that event of the past, oh, I think it's so important to have a facilitator like yourself to be able to go like, Okay, I'm having fun. Oops, I learned something about myself. <laughs> right? Yes, that's it. Yeah. And you know, uh, wh when you when I receive uh, people, um, the cards I, I I could work without using the cards. The cards are just a support, you know, and it reassures me because sometimes I feel some things and I said, no, it can't be possible. You are mistaking. You know, it's a you, you see and you feel sometimes crazy, crazy traumas, you know, and you have some pictures that are really disturbing. And the, the biggest difficulty in my job is how am I going to say that to the person if in front of me, you know, mm -hmm. um, in front of me or on the phone or on Zoom, you know, because mm. I receive the information right now and I have to tell the people without lying, you know, she has to know um, what's going on. So it's very difficult, but you can make, you can pull off the cards and you have this information that comes uh, through your mind 
just by looking at the person or looking at uh, his photograph, you know, you have this information. And the, 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 the aim is to say, hear what I feel, here's what I feel. I may be mistaken because I'm not God. I may, I, I may mm. mistake, you know, uh, spirituality is, a, is not a scientific uh, point of view, so I can make mistake. And sometimes I give the information and the person says, oh, no, that doesn't make sense for the moment. Okay, just take it, keep it. And in a few months or in a few weeks, it, it's going to make sense, you see. And that's it. You know, you receive a message and say, oh, yes, I, I remember. Oh, oh, yes, my parents told me, you know, and they make this connection. But, but you know, you, do, you don't need the cards, really. The cards, it's for reassuring people and re reassuring myself. But mediumity is really uh, being able to, to receive the information and not mentalize them, you know, not making uh, pass through your brains. Because if you, if you feel something and you say, oh, what does it mean? No, you're wrong. You're on the wrong path. You have to receive the information and give the information as you have received it. If you make mm. an interpretation of the information, you are on the wrong way, you know. You are giving your human perspective and point of view. And this is the essence, you know, as you said, a medium has normally to give the information as it goes. And sometimes I don't understand anything about the symbolics that are given to me. But that's not the point. It's up to the, the people to understand what, what I receive. And that's really difficult because uh, I think a lot. I want to do my best. So sometimes I feel that I go to the wrong path of interpretation. So I go back to the center and say, no, that's the picture I saw. So what is the meaning of the picture I saw, you know? And it's all about feelings. It's all about, you know, um, uh, thin perceptions. And it's really, it's really difficult to have that in our society now. Well, I think that skill of having space between the information and understanding it as information and um and and action right and and inter interpretation like well, how does this fit in my life that is a skill that we can all benefit from that is really a, a connected to the skill of raising awareness because once we're aware if we jump directly to oh what does that mean <laughs> usually you're going to give yourself some disease that way right it's a there are there are certain um, when people are are recovering from from alcoholism and other you know problems that they've had in their lives. There's a saying that in the first year you always have a brain tumor, right? It's like because all of a sudden all the awareness raises and you and you try to interpret. And when you interpret, you get on the internet and you go to WebMD and you go forget it. Like now I'm I'm just about to die, right? But if you, you lose just don't do message. that. Yes. Yes. You lose yes. Message. You lose the message. That's right. Because if you can sit with just the information, then the message will reveal itself instead of you and your your crafty little brain trying to make it into something. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. The exercise that helps me to to entertain that and to to maintain this ability, this capacity is when I can communicate with dead people, you know, when you are just in mediumity, pure mediumity, without cards, without pendulums, just the photograph of the deceased person. It's, it's a jump in uh, the unknown, you know, because you don't know this person. You've never seen this person of your life. And you say, you have 45 minutes or an hour in front of you and you have uh, maybe a mother, maybe a brother, uh, a child that is expecting to have messages from uh, this person. And 
I, I, I can't I can't be mistaken. You know, this is not a possibility. It, it, you have to you have to pass the exam, as we say in France. <laughs> you have to pass the exam. So it's very stressful. But uh, if the, the the dead person gives you uh, a picture or just a word, you have to give this picture or to give this word to uh, the people. And you have to interpret, you have to to discover, because it's a discovery, what is the message hidden behind this this picture or this word, you know? It's it's so um it's so wonderful and so stressful at the same time because you can have hundreds of meanings uh, through the through the the same picture because we have uh, different backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds. Sometimes it's a cultural um, objects or a topic mm. that I don't know mm. because I'm very bad at geography. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, as a, what what is the meaning behind this thing? Uh, I don't know. It can be a you know a monument or a statue or uh, the name of a street. You know, I don't know, and. The person is smiling, you know, uh, the client is smiling because she or he understands just by one word or one picture. And they say, oh, my God, this is it. And I don't know what is it, what it is. I, I, I can't know. And the aim is to say, oh, yes, this is my deceased person because she or he has given me the information I was waiting for. And it's so it's so joyful. We talked about joy. When I when I finish uh, the communication with uh, someone who's dead, I feel so much gratitude, you know, so so much joy inside of me, as if I was uh, the person who received the message. I say, "Oh my God, this is so crazy! I can do that," and uh, the person is going to to heal and is going to learn to live again and, and to to grieve, you know. Uh, the dead people. So that that's joy, a hundred percent joy. That's pure joy, really. Yeah, yeah. A great way to uh, start to wrap up that in our spiritual exchanges, uh, you know, that's that's where we can find this explosive joy and power, right? Because you you go like you said, holy, I could do that. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, that's that is something is what we can do and what we can become aware of is uh, beyond maybe our wildest dreams. So thank you so much for talking to me today, Julie. It is such a pleasure to get to uh, just, uh, you know, gnaw over these ideas together. So thank you. You are a sunshine. That's lovely. When thank I you. saw your profile, I said, this, this woman, and I, I thought this girl, you know, so that means that you have a strong, <laughs> That's what a I like. strong uh, in French is enfant intérieur, you know, inside child. I don't know if you say that in English, but I said that girl is a sunshine. It's written on your face, you know, as if your face was a sunshine. So I said, I have to connect with her and I have to talk with her. I don't know how. It, it's the first time for me here this kind of exchange uh, in English, but I, it would be a pleasure to to share your networks too. Thank you. Well, you did it perfectly, Thank and you. Uh, I am so pleased that you took that chance. Thank you so much, and. Thank you all for listening today. And uh, as usual, you can find everything about me and what I've got going on at donalyn.blog. 